hi there. Can everyone hear me in the back? Okay. Awesome. All right. Uh, I'm Bowen. My name is Peter. Uh, we're from Western, and we're going to here to talk to you about magnetic hyperthermia therapy for the treatment of uh, ependymomas in children. So here's our agenda. We're just going to give some overview before diving into our experimental design. So epidemomas, they arise from the cells that line the ventricular system of our body. Uh, you can see that in the light blue and around here. And the ventricular system is kind of like the plumbing system of the brain and spinal cord. Um, in children, the epidemomas are generally found in the brain. Uh, you can separate the brain into a supratentorial and a posterior fossa region. And in adults, generally, it happens in the spine. Uh, epidemomas are currently classified into nine subtypes based on criteria such as DNA methylation profile, um, chromosome abnormalities, and um, the World Health Organization uh, tumor grade. And uh, here's another emphasis that uh, tumors in the brains of children are generally harder to treat and have worse prognosis. So epidemomas, they can be diagnosed by MRI. So we have an MRI image of a fourth ventricle uh, epidemoma, so a posterior fossa. So the current treatment for epidemomas is surgery, followed, usually followed up by radiation therapy. So, and then chemotherapy is a uh, limited use right now. It's not done too often. And then the important thing is uh, the treatment is consistent across all of the different subtypes that were shown on the previous slide. So regardless of what kind of epidemoma you have, if you want to dissect as much tissue as possible and then follow up by radiation. So you can see the graph here. We have uh, four different treatment categories. The green line is totally resected, and then the blue line is partially, partial resection of the tumor. And you can see it's associated with uh, far poor, far unfavorable outcomes. And then we have a second graph showing overall survival and it follows the same general trend. So we identified some limitations of the current treatment. So right now, for surgery, oftentimes the tumor, the location of the tumor makes it difficult to access, resulting in subtotal resections, which we know is associated with poor prognosis. Uh, radiotherapy, radiation exposure is associated with neurological deficits. And particular, this is particularly concerning for ependymomas because we know that it targets pediatric patients primarily, and they have a developing brain. And then chemotherapy is limited because uh, previous previous subgroup talked about it. They're generally considered chemo resistant. So the bottom line is we need a we need an alternative treatment method that can supplement surgery that uh, that can reduce radiation exposure. So one such therapy involves heating a localized area in the body, such as a tumor, to a high enough high enough temperature to ach to achieve a therapeutic effect. So from, let's take a look at the graph on the, on the left. So this temperature range is generally what you get when you have a high fever. But when you go a little higher than that, research has shown that uh, cells start stopping to divide and sometimes they die. And if you go higher than that, then you're just uh, burning the cells off. Uh, cancer cells are very different from normal cells and some of these differences make them more susceptible to the heat. And here's just some historical precedents, precedents and observations that people made that hinted at heating tumors before uh, hypothermia therapy. So now that the question is that, like, so ependymomas are in the brain, so we heat the brain then, right? Uh, so how do we do that? So introducing uh, magnetic nanoparticles. This, these are transmission electron microscopy images of these nanoparticles, and they're tiny, tiny, tiny. And, uh, one special thing is that they can be stimulated to produce heat when uh, in the presence of alternating magnetic fields. And that forms the basis of uh, magnetic hyperthermia therapy. And the most commonly used kind of nanoparticle is the super paramagnetic iron nanoparticles. I'm just going to call them iron nanoparticles or spions. Think of them like as tiny iron mans that zip around in your body and they can home in to, to your target. So here's a cartoon diagram. It's a high, as you can see, it's a highly modulable platform. You can even attach a drug to it. But we're interested in just the magnetic core and how it gives off heat. And here's actually a, this is from a review paper on clinical trials for magnetic 
hypothermia therapies in glioblastoma. And the second row here shows a, a phase two study that showed uh, promising results. So for our research, we want to focus in on those limitations of treating ependymomas. So the first issue we identified is brain ependymomas can often be hard to fully, fully remove. And then a second issue we identified is radiation exposure is detrimental to developing brains. So we really want to find a, like a viable alternative therapy that reduces exposure to radiation. And so we, were, we are proposing magnetic hyperthermia therapy to treat brain tumors, specifically epidemomas. So we hypothesize that magnetic hyperthermia therapy will halt epidemoma growth and kill cancer cells in the brain. So to test this hypothesis, we will be integrating three main aims. First, we'll be, we, want, we want to determine the extent that these spions are actually accumulating in the tumor tumor site. Uh, our second aim is to determine how effective magnetic hyperthermia therapy actually is in killing off these cells. And then our third aim is to look at for uh, mod modifying the surface of these particles to see if we can get more tumor specific targeting. All right, so into the details of our aim one looking at accumulations, we're going to start in vitro and cell culture. We're going to compare normal and ependymal cell lines. Uh, after administering a fixed quantity of the iron nanoparticles. After a fixed amount of time, we'll measure accumulation using um, several uh, verified techniques. Then we'll move on to an in vivo model, uh, a mouse model, uh, where we'll be injecting these iron nanoparticles directly into the brains of the mice using uh, convection enhanced delivery. And we will measure accumulation through um, MRI. Here's just a quick diagram of convection enhanced delivery. Its advantage is that it can get to hard to reach areas in the brain, such as ventricles, and it's a pressure based system that can deliver a therapeutic agent in a concentrated, uh, accurate area. Uh, so the uh, second aim we want to see if uh, MHT can actually kill the cancer cells. So we do the same thing. Uh, we start in this petri dish and uh, we incubate with the iron nanoparticles, and this time we heat them up. And after a certain amount of time, we will test for cell viability using something like the tripan blue assay and then look for markers of cell death. Uh, then we translate this to an animal model again. We repeat the same thing, except for we add uh, thermal imaging to look at the temperature rise in the tumor. And then we will monitor the tumor using MRI over maybe days and weeks uh, to see tumor size shrinkage. Uh, third and finally, we will use a bioinformatics uh, approach to look for specific surface markers from different subtypes of ependymomas. And from that, we can modify this uh, ependymoma that you can see here using a targeting ligand or maybe an antibody to help the uh, ependymoma, the, the eye nanoparticles accumulate into the cells. Uh, accumulation is very important, something called thermal dose, which uh, that's very important in that. So magnetic hyperthermia therapy has demonstrated efficacy in treating glioblastoma, which is a more common and aggressive brain tumor. So we hope that that success there can translate to treating ependymomas. So in our experiment, if we, if we display efficacy in treating ependymomas, this can provide an alternative treatment that will reduce, hopefully reduce radiation exposure in children. And. Uh, the, so for a magnetic hypothermia therapy, uh, the principles or the mechanism, how, how it operates is basically the same over any, all the tumor subtype. It just kills by heating. Uh, however, if we do know the subtype, we can treat uh, maybe pediatric cases with modified uh, iron nanoparticles so that uh, the targeting ligand will enhance accumulation. And hopefully uh, with that, comes better prognosis and, uh, uh, you know, so children uh, uh, with hepatoma, without epinoma can say, I love you 3000 to, uh, to their parents at night. And uh, we'd like to thank you for your attention and we'd like to thank Dr. Chi Zhang and uh, Reza Kazak for the Biotron for their uh, expertise and advice. And we're free to take questions.
do you, can you, first of all, can you explain this con, uh, convection delivery? Sure, I'll do that to the best of my ability. Right. Uh, so it involves using catheters to that punctures into the, directly into the brain, and then uh, at the tip of the catheter, uh, it, uh, it delivers a therapeutic agent using bulk flow instead of diffusion, so it's more precise and accurate. I hope that answers. Um, is the idea to give this therapy after surgery? Like, are you, would you still be relying on resection? Uh, surgery is always going to be needed. Uh, it's going to be after surgery, before, generally before the radiation. There's research that shows that the heating, the hypothermia, actually sensitizes the cells for radiation. So, so if the radiation is still required after, what is the hope of this therapy? Um, is it to improve the efficacy of the radiation? Is it to replace the radiation? Is it to reduce the dose of the radiation? Uh, so basically, we would need to collect more knowledge, but preliminarily, I think it's to supplement or complement the radiation, so it would not, it would try to improve the efficacy of the radiation. Okay, so you'd be using the same radiation doses? Uh, perhaps lower radiation doses because, or uh, less time, uh, less therapy sessions. Um, so, so that's interesting. Um, thanks for reviewing the history. I think, I think heat to kill tumors has been around for a while. Um, I think there was a time um, a few decades ago where they were actually putting little tiny light bulbs into the tumor cavity um, because light bulbs used to generate heat. Uh, they generated more heat than light um, to kill the cells. Um, and and that, that was kind of went for a while. For a while. Um, but, but now there's a new, another way to deliver heat to kill tumors. Have you guys heard of um, laser interstitial therapy? Tumor uh, therapy? No, that's no, no. Not, not heard of neur neuroblate. It was a technique to use a laser to focus heat I think it was being used in, uh, in Vancouver for a while, and then I think they had some funding issues. Um, it's also used in epilepsy surgery. What 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 is the what do the nanoparticles add to the to the delivery of the of the heat? Well, thank you for the question. Uh, so for our experiment, we're basically focused on the intrinsic properties of the megaparticle, which is the heating, but also uh, as from the previous slide, um, we can modulate nanoparticles to add drugs on it or other um, things that can enhance uh, enhance therapy. So it's not just the heat that you're hoping to combine it? Yes, but I think we didn't want to cram too much and we sure. wanted to focus on the intrinsic properties. Sure. And, and what are the side effects from this therapy? Oh, I'm glad you asked. Uh, uh, so the nanoparticles have been used as uh, MRI contrast agents for a while, so toxicity-wise, that's less of a concern, especially if when we actually use iron nanoparticles. As you can see, uh, as, as we know, the iron is metabolized in our body, so these nanoparticles, in research has shown that these nan nanoparticles can undergo metabolism. Uh, and as you know, uh, in recent cancer therapy, they are looking into hijacking the iron metabolism pathway to deliver drugs and such. I think Dr. Mangus, you may have been getting at this. What, a, what about the side effects of the heat itself? In, oh, in, uh, in oh. The oh, sorry about that. Uh, okay. uh, so the heat will, so the slight heating is 40 to 45 degrees. Heat will affect normal cells, but uh, research has shown that cancer cells are generally more susceptible to the heating. Uh, although some cancer cell lines or subtypes might be more heat resistant than others, so that's why we're also playing with that, playing around with different uh, cell lines. What what kind of um, damage do you think you could do to normal brain, or what kind of effect could you have on normal brain? Uh, so heating cells can disturb the physical properties of the cell. Uh, uh, one comes to mind is like the lipid membrane. Uh, ion imbalances and stuff. And you can also trigger heat shock proteins, which we uh, mentioned that we will be looking at, and that could cause apoptosis in some conditions. Have you guys read about brain edema? 
Swelling, we know in general. So, so one of the side effects of this laser interstitial thermal therapy, lit or neuroblade training, has been brain edema. So what what they what they problem they've had is, is when they they destroyed the tumor, but the brain around it is swollen, and that's actually made patients deteriorate. 